Hi guys, I'm back again and welcome to the third movie I'm going to review for 31 Days of Horror. This one, I really, I have a soft spot for it. I love this one so much. It was hyped up before I saw it, I'd heard of it, I'd seen a few clips from it, the trailer, you know, and... Oh, it's just so good, it's it's my bloody valentine. I know many of you are thinking, like, modern day horror fans, you, you think it's the one that came out in 2009, you know. But this is the original 1981 version, which I think is far, far superior to the 2009 remake. I like the 2009 remake, but it was nothing compared to this. This film's quite an interesting one. It's history with the censors. I'll get into that in a minute, though. 20 years after a Valentine's Day tragedy, a small town prepares for its annual holiday dance. When a box of candy arrives containing an eerie warning and a blood-soaked heart, the townsfolk realise that this Valentine's Day romance is as good as dead. And so are they. That's the gist of it again. It's like a typical revenge story. Uh, there were a bunch of miners and the, that went underground and the people that were supposed to be supervising them snuck away. Like, they were just a couple of guys. It's, and they went to this party and they left the miners down there in the... Uh, uh, what's it called? I can't remember what it was called. The gas levels. Uh, the technical chemical term I can't remember for it, but that they rose and they all blew up apart from Harry Warden, the miner. They save him, but he flips out and kills the two other miners. And that this was years ago before the actual plot of the film occurs. And he warns that if anybody, if there's ever a Valentine's Day party like dance again that those two guys went to, then there'll be havoc to ensue. How much there is? This is um. I can remember it was like 20 years later after that and they do it again and there is another killer walking around. Again, like with Terry, I'm not going to ruin who the identity of he or she is that's killing people. It's... I will say it's not Harry Warden. That's really easy to work out. It's too obvious to be him. He, he um, died before the events of My Brother Valentine take place. Uh, it's like he dresses up... It, the killer dresses up in a mining outfit, which I think is really good. It's sort of like an iconic look, like Jason had the the hockey mask, Michael Myers had the William Shatner mask and the boiler suit, Freddie had the striped top and the um the glove. And the miner with his pickaxe is a pretty good um sight. Unfortunately there was never a sequel though. Like you'd think somebody as iconic as this would have a sequel, and he should have done. Like, the killer, the killer could, well, the killer, um, could potentially return for a sequel. Again, I'm not going to say whether or not they die or live, I mean, they could have killed them off in this, but, they, you know, they can easily bring them back for sequels, they could make up some excuse. But this film came at a very bad time to be submitted for a rating in America. You see, Friday the 13th was released in 1980, virtually uncut. There was a few snipped scenes, like, cut scenes, but uh, that was really gory and brutal. And a lot of these, at least, Idiots who didn't like it started complaining about how evil it was and all that. I mean, it's it's just rather silly now thinking about it, but the MPA, the film readers, they took them seriously. And they took their scissors to loads of other horror films with no mercy. They censored the hell out of them. This is one of the main examples. This version has um some never-before-seen footage. Because when it was submitted back in the day... They cut out, I think, at least two and a half minutes of gore. Like, not just a few bits, but two and a half minutes. Maybe even three and a half. I can't remember. There's apparently a lot of uh, nine minutes of delete, um, other missing scenes. I don't think it's gore, though. It's just missing, like, deleted scenes out somewhere. Not because of censorship, but they just can't be found. But anyway, they cut the scenes. It played. I don't think people... It was hyped up, like, to be really gory. There was a, there was a magazine called Fangoria that horror fans read. It said... Well, it showed photos, actually of some of the death scenes, like, in their full brutality. But what audience got, audiences got to see was a very watered-down version. And the censored scenes remained lost for years. Every DVD release and video release after that was always the cut version. But, surprise, surprise, the footage was found, I think it was in 2008, or maybe 2009, the DVD release was in 2009, but I'm not too sure when it was found. But anyway, in fact, no, I just remembered they found it back in the early 2000s. They confirmed that the footage existed, but they um, had no way of releasing it. Nobody wanted to release it. They didn't think it was popular enough back then. <laughs> How wrong they were. This thing sold like wildfire, to my knowledge. 
loads of horror fans will love it. And yeah, with these extra kills, I think it really helps the film. Like, the first kill at the beginning simple simply the how... I think it's... No, it's not how I won by that point, but the minor kill, like, pushes a woman on the pickaxe. Uh, you see it going through the chest. It's not in much, but it's done quite nicely. It looks so real. Uh, the second kill... Well, it's more the aftermath of the kill. The guy opens a tumble dryer, and there's a woman inside that, like, burnt to a crisp. Like, just circling around because the thing's still going and that was cut that's in it uh one of my favorite deaths is the murder of happy the guy that runs the like a liquor store nearby or something like that he gets the um pickaxe right up like right up here and it comes out his eye like it's very convincing no cgi whatsoever it's done so nicely it looks so good it's it's unreal a uh, guy gets his face slammed into hot water, like, I think they're cooking hot dogs in it or something. You see it burning off. A uh, guy gets a nail gun at the face, like, gets ripped, puts it beside his head, blasts somewhere, and then gets him in the centre. Oh, uh, well, see it. Impales a woman. It's no brutal, but you see her face after the impalement for a lot longer. Like, it's quite terrifying to see. And I bet there's many other death scenes that I'm missing out on. I can't think of them off the top of my head. Oh, no. No, I just remembered one. I can't let this one go. This is the best kill in the movie, probably. It's very inventive, too. I've never, ever... Se I've never seen it before. And by this point, audiences hadn't seen it either back in the 80s. He takes a woman, like, as a shower foster, like... Uh, not like a shower that you have in your bathroom, but it's like a pipe, obviously. And it just spurts out the water. He takes the woman by the head, pulls her up. She's like, I'm out so many. puts her... He rams her head back into the show for his last. Uh -uh. And the thing's sticking out. And she's like just dangling there. And he turns on and it's, there's a shower of water just coming out of her mouth. It's so inventive and so cool. Uh, I, the effects like for the murders are really good. I, I would recommend this film. It's not restored though. The footage looks like it's from the 80s. They didn't take the time to like make it look HD-ish if you know what I mean. It's still it's very scratched but it doesn't matter because you can tell what's happening. Uh, I don't know really what else to say about this one. It's something you have to see for yourself, I think. The um, characters are more adults in this one. Like, they're not teenagers who are going about having sex and whatever. Uh, they only go down to the mine, like, an hour into it, I believe. Like, the killer's going around the town before that. Often a few people here and there, but the main group don't go down into the mine until about an hour in. And it's very nicely done, like you hear the water dripping in under the ground, like it's pitch black in some scenes. There's a lot of jump scares, some pretty good ones. And the end, the end is really good, like the killer's identity. But even that was cut. Like, the de I'm not going to ruin it again, like, I'm g I'll say this, the killer could come back. But the killer is hurt, and that was cut, it's not even that bad. Uh... But it was cut, and it makes no sense in the censored version. So, I'd give this one a 10 out of 10 as well. This one is just so good. You've got to see it yourself. I would buy this version. This version alone, and no other version. The other versions are all censored. All the scenes are cut. And just for a bit of foreshadowing, when it comes to censorship uh, in this series... We'll be getting back to we'll be getting back to censorship later on because I've got a few things to say about that. But until then, ciao.